Hello everyone and welcome to the Gravy Train YouTube channel. My name is Jason and I'm one of the newest members of the admin team. Uh, this video and others on this channel are intended to provide some education and highlight interesting topics in the world of numismatics. The topic I've chosen for this video today uh, is meals. They're one of my favorite areas as it's funny to think about the circumstances in which they mistakenly mix up the dyes and sometimes even with two different countries. I'll quickly check up a pic of how a coin gets minted so we can see how the error may occur. As you can see in the pic, there's the obverse die at the bottom, the blank gets fed in, the collar sits around it, and the reverse die comes down and strikes the coin. So as you can see, the name mule derives from the mule animal, which is a hybrid offspring of a horse and a donkey, due to the coin having two sides intended for different coins. Much as a mule has different parents, from two different species. So if we start to look at some examples, probably the most famous pre-decimal meal is the 1916 I halfpenny, made up of the Indian quarter annas obverse and the Australian halfpenny's reverse, as both coins were minted at the Kolkata Mint at the time. It's said that there are around 250 minted, but there are less than 10 actually known most famous decimal coin mule would be the $2,001 reverse with an Australian 10 cent obverse. Uh, this one's most easily identified by the double rim as the die for the 10 cent is slightly smaller. The $1 is 25 mils and the 10 cent is 24 mils. There are thought to be around 6,000 of these minted. I found this one while noodling, and I've actually found another one, so quite lucky. A similar meal was made by friends across the pond in New Zealand, when in 2004, a 10 cent reverse was paired with a $1 obverse, also creating a double rim on the obverse, uh, as their $1 is slightly smaller than their 10 cent. The 10 cent measuring 23.6 mils and the one dollar 23 mils so there's not much in it but you can definitely notice the double rim um, when you look at it closely uh, yeah so he has a graded one um, there you can see a mule with one dollar of this um, but it's definitely a lot easier to see it in that raw coin. Uh, the next one I have is actually a mule uh, from two different countries. Um, so this is actually probably one of my favorites. Uh, the mule has the obverse of a 1966 Bahamas Islands 5 cent. Uh, and the reverse, that of a New Zealand two cent. As you can see, the coin has no date on it, um, as that would have been on the New Zealand obverse. Uh, but this one came out um, in New Zealand's decimal changeover. So this was easily spotted when four were discovered on the very first day of New Zealand's decimal currency changeover. Uh, it's estimated that around 65,000 to 100,000 of these were minted. So um, people were in an uproar and they, newspapers started putting articles about it. <laughs> so in a frenzy, the banks actually um, then hand sorted through over 600,000 two cents um, and found close to 60,000 mules that were then melted down uh, in Auckland. The bank also advised people that they could bring the mules in and exchange them for the regular two cent. But as you can imagine, not many people took them up on that offer. Uh, there are many more examples of these types of errors, such as in the US. <coughs> the 2000p Sacagawea dollar um, had a reverse die paired with a 50 state quarter obverse. So this is unquestionably one of the most famous of the U.S. mules. Um, there are around 20 examples known, 
and they are probably the most sought after is also the 2001 D Lincoln scent paired with the, um, a Risafelt Dime Reverse. These are some of my favorite coins in my collection. They've also been known to be counterfeited. Uh, so if you're looking to buy one, I suggest contacting a reputable dealer or try to get a slabbed one. But as I did with the 2001 Illumiel, they can be found in your change. So happy hunting. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you made it this far, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, please put them in the comments. Please also check out the Gravy Train Facebook group. I'll put a link in the description. There's lots of information there for collectors and we run a number of competitions to win some great prizes from our long-standing sponsors. Hope everyone has a good day and I'll catch you on the next one.